last week on the Cruiserweight Classic. Interpromotional battles between SmackDown and TNA Wrestling took center stage. We witnessed the Latino World Order's Joaquin Wilde one-on-one -on -one against TNA legend Frankie Kazarian. Wilde impressed in a rare single showing, but Kaz proved to be all too much to handle as he secured his spot in the quarterfinal round. Then, another TNA standout in Jonathan Gresham battled SmackDown's Chad Gable. A hold for hold, suplex for suplex, and a strategic match wrestled by both men. In the end, Chad Gable broke his recent losing streak and will be moving on to the next round. Today, we conclude the first round of the CWC as NXT's Scottish Supernova, Noam Dar, steps into the ring with SmackDown's Bruiserweight, Pete Dunne. Plus, a multiple month rivalry comes to a head when J.D. McDonough takes on Tyler Bate with the added bonus of the Cruiserweight Championship on the line. Who will grab up the final spot in the quarterfinal round? It's time to find out live at the Cruiserweight Classic. Well, after some technical difficulties and a few hours delay, we are finally live for week four of the Cruiserweight Classic. We're back here in Midtown Manhattan, approaching the Hammerstein Ballroom as we look to conclude the first round of the CWC. Let us take a look at how this tournament has progressed thus far. We know Dragon Lee, Nathan Frazier, Javon Evans, Wesley, Frankie Kazarian, and Chad Gable have all made their way to the quarterfinals. Who will be last to join? We find out on this Sunday afternoon live from Manhattan, New York. And we're not gonna waste any more time. Let's get right down to the action here at the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. The Bruiserweight, once again donning the Pete Dunne moniker last month on SmackDown. This man, a former two-time Intercontinental Champion, former World Tag Team Champion, former NXT United Kingdom Champion, but for the first time finds himself participating in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament one-on-one -on -one with a familiar foe in the Scottish Supernova Noam Dar. These two international talents meeting on American soil tonight and the stakes could not be any higher. Of course, the winner of this matchup will meet the winner of tonight's main event between JD McDonough and Tyler Bay in the quarterfinal round in just two weeks time. What has been a busy week here in the WWE, of course, we are 24 hours removed from bad blood that went down just last night in Boston. The replay available now, a little technical difficulties delaying us here today, but we are finally live on this Sunday afternoon for week four of the Cruiserweight Classic. Hammerstein Ballroom jam-packed. These superstars are ready. The CWC has lit the world on fire for weeks, and this fire ain't getting put out anytime soon. Here comes an NXT representative. And his opponent. Weighing in at 178 pounds, to Nova 11, Noam Dar! Noam Dar representing NXT, former Heritage Cup champion three times at that. And Noam Dar very familiar with the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Competed in the inaugural tournament back in 2016, participated in three rounds of that 32-man bracket. Back in 2016, Noam Dar defeating Gerv Sierra in the first round, Ho Ho Loon in the second, and then fell short in the quarterfinal round to the brand new IWGP champion, Zack Sabre Jr. Congratulations to him. And Noam Dar looking to make his way all the way to the finals in 2024. That road could start here tonight, representing NXT in a battle against SmackDown representative Pete Dunne. 
First round has lit the world on fire over the last three weeks. Week four looking to be nothing short of that. First round action is peaked on one on one with Noam Dar. The Cruiserweight Classic Tournament officially continues. This is going to be a very interesting battle. You know, we have seen a lot of high flying matchups in this tournament thus far. And not that these two men are afraid to leave the soles of their boots. But if there's one thing we know about Pete Dunn specifically, he would much rather just beat you down with his fist or his feet and just incapacitate you like he's already trying to do to Noam Dar. Did not earn that nickname many years ago as the Bruiserweight for nothing. Pete Dunn absolutely vicious inside of that ring. Will hold no punches if it means defeat. But he cannot underestimate Noam Dar tonight. Dar has been successful in his years in NXT. Three-time Heritage Cup champion. Looking to be one of the final men to secure a spot in the quarterfinals of the CWC. So far, it is all Pete Dunne in the early moments of this matchup. Of course, Pete Dunne last month on SmackDown defeating his rival in JD McDonough in a brutal Falls Count Anywhere contest. Pete Dunne, J.D. McDonough, Tyler Bate, three men that have been intertwined for quite some time on Thursday and previously Friday nights. J.D. McDonough, Tyler Bate going to write the next chapter in their ever-growing rivalry right here in Hammerstein Ballroom. As for Pete Dunne, if he wants to get another opportunity at the Cruiserweight title, he's going to have to make his way through the CWC. Not if Noam Dar's got anything to say about it. The Scottish Supernova, Supernova 11, whatever you want to call him. Looking to make some waves here in Manhattan. Chuck and Pete Dunn to the outside, but he better not hesitate because Pete Dunn coming right after his tail. But once again, Dunn knocked down a ringside. No Amdor playing some mind games with Pete Dunn. You see, he didn't hustle up there, and that may have been a mistake. Allowed Pete Dunn to get to his feet. Got a little bit of breathing room, and now the Bruiser Ray is once again the aggressor here in the first round. So far, as we mentioned, we can expect Frankie Kazarian one-on-one -on -one with Chad Gable in two weeks' time. Next week, here in Midtown Manhattan, Dragon Lee, Nathan Frazier are going to lock horns. Javon Evans and Wes Lee as well. We wait one more quarterfinal matchup to be determined in this ever-exciting tournament. Pete Dunne showing you why he is the bruiserweight and he is not afraid to use his own body as a weapon if it means victory. Oh, a little soccer kick at an OM door that time just to take the rug right out from underneath the bruiserweight's feet. Oh man, no door look at her rev up the engines. A Scottish destroyer if I ever saw one. And just like that, Noam Dar has taken control. Pete Dunn on spaghetti legs, and Dar is all over the bruiser weight. Pete Dunn's gonna have to come out with some high octane maneuvers, some hard hitting ones, if and only if Noam Dar gives him some R and R and a window to take advantage of. If I'm Noam Dar, I am staying on the offense. I am pushing the metal. And doing exactly what he's doing here. And just trying to beat down Pete Dunn before he can do the reverse. Well, submission hold locked in here by Supernova 11. Dead center of the squared circle. There's Pete Dunn using his exposed knee to create a little distance. And follows it up with a pump kick. Great offense. Great reversal there by Pete Dunn. But there's a sidestep by NXT's Noam Dar. Dar looking to join Javon Evans as the next NXT representative in the quarterfinal round. All remains to be seen if he's going to be able to do so. Pete Dunne has been building some momentum for himself on SmackDown. Remains to be seen. Sound like a broken record saying it. If that momentum is going to keep up. Right now, Noam Dar shutting down any hope Pete Dunne had for a comeback in this matchup. Dunn rolling to the outside, trying to create a little bit of distance here, a little bit of breathing room. Oh no, off the forearm, has got Dorr in his grasp. Suplex down to the floor of Hammerstein. What a maneuver by the Bruiserweight. Dorr is going to feel that one on Monday morning. 
Hell, I think I felt that one. Such impact off the suplex and then right to the diamond plated steps. Sometimes there is nothing pretty about the arsenal of Pete Dunne. It is all effective. And just like that, Noam Dar, who's starting to stack up some offense, now finds himself with his back against the ropes. And Pete Dunne going to go back to the well with what works. Limb by limb, bone by bone, looking to break apart the Scottish Supernova. Dar getting the shoulder up at one. Very impressive survival instincts that time. Let's see if he's got what it takes to keep down Pete Dunne. Oh, looking to give Dunn a little taste of his own medicine going after the arm that time. Oh, wait a minute now. Noam Dar trying to expose the corner. Well, Dar never been afraid to get his hands dirty. Although he may not need that exposed steel, Pete Dunn is looking dazed. Noam Dar with a penalty kick that goes in the goal. Dunn set to the ropes. No, Dar takes his lights out again. One kick after another. But Pete Dunn's still alive. Dar exposed that steal. I think he wanted to institute it. There you see referee Adrian Butler taking care of it. But I think Dar realized he may not have needed the steal as Dunn was in an opportune state. And now Pete Dunn with some fire underneath of him. Tope suicide to the outside. As we said at the top of this matchup, these two men not afraid to leave the soles of their boots. Is it what they rely on? Maybe not. But there you saw Pete Dunn electing for the dive to the outside to try to neutralize the Scottish Supernova. Unfortunately, Supernova 11 himself is back in control. Week after week, we are seeing some great fights here in the middle of Midtown. Dar back to the top. Look to be going for a splash. Nobody home. Another reversal that time. No M. Dar trying to let adrenaline fuel him. A little bit overzealous. Half Nelson gets struck on his crown. Business pick it up here in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. Dar once again sent up against the buckles. I don't know what Pete Dunn's got in mind, but I got a feeling it's going to spell disaster for Supernova 11. Noam Dar about to be going to the moon and seeing some stars. Down he goes to the canvas. Manhattan coming unglued as once again Dar gets dropped in the back of his neck. Pete Dunn looked to be going for maybe a finale on this on this contest, but there's a reversal that time. Noam Dar evidently still has something left. Trying to kick things into a different gear. Once again, muscle down Pete Dunn with maneuvers similar to what makes the Bruiserweight special. Noam Dar feeling a sense of urgency. Saw Pete Dunn rallying. Big time maneuver after another. Dar just trying to hustle up and find his way to victory. Trying to survive Pete Dunn on this Sunday afternoon. Dunn once again sent the corner and just squashed. Pete Dunn might have expended himself. Might have shown his best hand. No M. Dar might have this matchup in the bag. It's only a matter of time. Well, there's a reversal there. Don't count out the Bruiserweight just yet. Flipping Dar inside out. And I don't think Pete is done just yet. Noam Dar going to a bitter broken end. Pete Dunn moving on to the quarterfinals. Well, that was one hell of a matchup. The Scottish Supernova clearly was holding no punches, willing to get his hands dirty if it meant success. But the Bruiserweight Pete Dunn, simply the better man on this Sunday afternoon here in Manhattan, New York.
The Bruiserweight making the most of this opportunity. A successful outing here in a jam-packed Hammerstein Ballroom. Pete Dunne advances in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament as we take a look at the updated bracket. Pete Dunne joins six other names, now making it a total of seven in the quarterfinals. One more spot to be determined within moments here in Manhattan. When the tension rises and the war on the battlefield begins, there is only one thing for these superstars to do. Survive! Coming your way on Saturday night, November 16th, for the Kia Center in Orlando, Florida. Witness the 2024 edition of the Fall Classic as the superstars of Raw and SmackDown, along with No Nation Gaming channel memberships, proudly present Survivor Series! We're 24 hours removed from bad blood, but this train doesn't stop moving. We are on the road to Survivor Series, Saturday night, November the 16th live at 5 p.m. Eastern time and 4.30 for channel members. Survivor Series gonna be off the hook next month in Orlando, but what about next week right back here in Midtown Manhattan? The quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament will kick off as NXT's young OG, Javon Evans, is one-on-one -on -one with SmackDown representative Wesley. Also going down next Sunday afternoon, one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions, LWO's newest member in Dragon Lee, takes on Nathan Fraser, who many believe had the greatest performance of the CWC yet. Next week, Dragon Lee, Fraser, right back here in Midtown. Well, no doubt the most high stakes matchup of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament thus far. And the Irish Devil, JD McDonough, certainly trolling the luckiest straw. Not only are we about to witness the final first round matchup of the 2024 Cruiserweight Classic, but of course, Tyler Bate insisting that he defended his title through each and any round he participates in in this very tournament. You gotta believe if JD McDonough is successful on this Sunday afternoon, he will not be awarding Pete Dunne or anybody else those same opportunities. Nonetheless, Tyler Bate looking to be a fighting champion, just as he's been over the last 99 days since he defeated JD McDonough in London, England at Money in the Bank in July. McDonough has had a handful of opportunities to get back the title. One-on-one -on -one match on SmackDown interrupted by Pete Dunne. Granted, really the Irish Devil's fault on that one for having such issues with Pete Dunne that developed throughout the summer and into the fall. And it held just last weekend at Halloween Havoc Night 1 for No Nation Gaming channel members. McDonough, Dunne, and Tyler Bate. Triple threat ladder match. Tyler Bate pulling down the championship one week ago. You gotta believe if McDonough is unsuccessful, he is headed to the back of the line in the cruiserweight division. It is go big or go home. If the Irish Devil wants his championship back, today is the time to get it. But you gotta believe this man isn't gonna go down without a fight. The big strong boy, Tyler Bate, at the helm of the cruiserweight division. I am sure he has sat back 
and watched all the competition week in and week out throughout the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. The fighting champion looking to give everybody an opportunity, even if that includes a man he has had a lot of issues with for the last few months on SmackDown and JD McDonough. But you gotta give ups to Tyler Bay putting the championship on the line in a matchup that already has such stakes. The winner moves on to the quarterfinals. They will meet Pete Dunne in two weeks time right back here in Manhattan, New York. The CWC continuing to heat up as we close out the first round. Of what has been an incredible four weeks here in Hammerstein Ballroom. Tyler Bate, JD McDonough, one more time for the Cruiserweight Championship and to advance in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. High stakes, high reward in the middle of a sold out Hammerstein in Midtown Manhattan. Let us send things down to the ring to Mike Rome for the official championship introductions. Introducing the challenger from Gray, Kelly Winkler, Ireland, weighing in at 180 pounds, J.D. McDonough. And his opponent from Dudley, England, weighing in at 175 pounds, the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Tyler Bay. Tyler Bate, another defense of the Cruiserweight Championship gold. Looking to be a fighting champion. I am sure he is hoping to get through McDonough, bury this story once and for all, and move on to challenge Pete Dunne in the quarterfinals. McDonough taking a gaze at the goal that he was obsessed with winning for months on SmackDown. Finally did. Defeating Ilya Dragunov in a last man standing matchup back in the month of May. But Tyler Bate the one who played spoiler. Final first round matchup of the CWC is underway. Referee Chad Patton wearing the zebra stripes this Sunday afternoon. JD McDonough hot out of the gate. These two men know each other's playbooks pretty well at this point after all their interactions over the last few months on SmackDown. McDonough not going to hold any punches. Looking to get this thing done in a jiffy here in Midtown. McDonough knowing he's going to have another encounter with Pete Dunne if he can get through Tyler Bate tonight. I am sure McDonough would not mind getting his hands on the man who defeated him in the Falls Count Anywhere last month. If this keeps up, McDonough's going to be in hot pursuit of doing so. Manhattan, New York with no choice but to show their appreciation as J.D. McDonough went skyward, but Tyler Bate looking to cut off McDonough's early offense. Not if the Irish Ace has anything to say about it. J.D. McDonough not going to give Tyler Bate any kind of breathing room here. Well, there's Bate sending McDonough back inside the ring. Well, once again, pulls the rug right out from underneath the big strong boy's feet. JD trying to steal the championship. Tyler Bate flips him inside out. Who's going to the quarterfinals? Will it be Tyler? Will it be JD? Back and forth they go. Referee Chad Patton getting an exercise in there. Oh! Some of that unique offense that Tyler Bate brings to the table. JD McDonough rolling to the outside here. Bate in hot pursuit with a tope of his own. Knocking down McDonough at ringside. Tyler Bay amped up here in Manhattan. A shooting star press at ringside now. Make it a dose. Tyler Bay matching JD McDonough's energy with this aggression here in the first round of the CWC. Some bad blood, no pun intended, after we just got done that PLA less than 24 hours ago. The bad blood between these two men that has developed since the month of July. Bate looking to end this once and for all here on this Sunday afternoon. Send JD McDonough not only out of the Cruiserweight Classic, but to the back of the line of the Cruiserweight division. There's Tyler starting to unload again. Some great offense on the outside of the ring. Tyler Bates showing JD McDonough. If you want to break things down into a fight, I will meet you there. You're better off keeping this inside of the ring where you can actually have a chance at winning the title. There's a reversal by McDonough. Some early onslaughts from both of these men. 
Might have expended themselves a little too much. Starting to slow down a bit here. Got a feeling we are in for a war of attrition between JD and Tyler. As we talked about a few moments ago, wait a minute, hold that thought. Tyler Bate muscling JD down. Powerful legs does the big strong boy bring to the table. As we talked about, these two men been in, inside the squared circle with each other time and time again over the last few months on SmackDown and at premium live events as well. Starting to know each other's game books very well. You'll find yourself in a position where you got to mix up the offense and try to throw your opponent off their game. And I think Tyler Bate just being aggressive in this matchup is going to be something that surprises J.D. McDonough. Tyler Bate normally pretty reserved inside of that ring. Does not let his emotions get the best of him. Very zen, as he would call it. J.D. McDonough has been a thorn in his side for long enough. And clearly McDonough showed in the first few moments of this matchup that he will stop at nothing to win the title. Tyler Bates sending McDonough to the outside. Tyler now diving over the top rope. This certainly is awesome as McDonough and Tyler Bates wage war for the highest prize in the cruiserweight division. Tyler Bate wanting to be a fighting champion, wanting to give this division opportunities. He has been a fighting champion on SmackDown, but JD McDonough looking to be the man who strips him of his gold here today. I think Tyler Bate, or I should say, I think JD McDonough's best decision at this point in the matchup Real, uh, realizing that Tyler Bate is going to match his energy and go punch for punch, go dive for dive. McDonough's best offense would be to slow this down and incapacitate Tyler Bate. All remains to be seen if McDonough's going to have enough left in the tank. Tyler Bate with a lot of big time offense over the last few minutes. Going right at JD McDonough. See McDonough slowing the pace of this contest down. The Irish Devil now. Scale on the ropes, telling Tyler Bate to never bet against an ace. Tyler's got to take Tyler. I should say JD's got to take Tyler out of it. But once again, never take your eyes off the cruiserweight champion. Nearly caught McDonald once again here in Midtown. Big time, Saito falls up with another shooting star. Just when you think J.D. McDonough has taken Tyler Bay out of this thing, Tyler Bay continues to rise. Just goes to show you how much these two men have studied each other. What is there, a discount on shooting stars? Goes for another one, but Tyler Bay just relying on that maneuver one too often. I understand how effective it can be, but the cruiserweight champion choosing to go to the well way too many times. And McDonough just caught him. Once again, J.D. McDonough's best offense is going to be to take away Tyler, slow him down. Putting him on the top rope here. What has the Irish Ace got in mind for a man who's been a thorn in his side? Here comes J.D. Spanish fly for the top. And into the cover to advance and win gold. Not just yet. Man, what a first round of the Cruiserweight Classic we have seen over the last four weeks. There's still another four weeks of action to go. The quarterfinals kick off next week. Tyler getting to his feet, looking worse for wear. On the shoulders, devil inside. McDonough's got it secured. Or maybe not. Tyler Bate muscles the shoulder up once again. Just when you think Tyler's out, he continues to rise like a phoenix. JD hanging up the champion in the trio. Whoa here, what has he got in mind? Blow it out the back. Yeah, we said it. Tyler Bates gotta be hurting. Backstabber. That's moments removed from that devil inside plus the Spanish fly off the top. Tyler Bates' lower body has gotta be hurting him right now. Once again, Tyler, maybe a sense of urgency here. Going to try to put together some maneuvers for himself. He's got J.D. McDonough loopy, or maybe we thought 
Oh no, headbutt. McDonough going for the combination of strikes. All the offense that JD has instituted, but it's still not enough. Tyler Bate will not say die. Bate now, great in some distance after surviving some of JD McDonough's best. Elbow drop off the springboard. You got to commend Tyler Bate. You got to realize he is fighting through pain right now. McDonough looking up at the lights of Hammerstein Ballroom. Tyler Bate is rallying here in Midtown Manhattan. McDonough going to the outside, but I think this matchup thus far has proved that that is not a safe spot for the champion. Brain Buster. And Bate is not done. The story of this matchup has told a very aggressive side of Tyler Bate. A very resilient side as well. Another shooting star. JD McDonough may have shown his best hand and the Irish Ace may have no more cards left. If Tyler Bate rallies, this is gonna be one hell of a comeback in the first round of the CWC all over JD McDonough at ringside. Referee John Cohen at a count of seven. If both these men are counted out, Pete Dunn's gonna get a first class ticket to the semifinals immediately. Nonetheless, back inside the ring we go. Tyler Bates scaling the ropes. Some great offense at ringside. Physical attack gets caught up by JD McDonough. Scoop and a slam. Down goes the champ. JD McDonough might have cost Tyler Bates there. Now he goes to the top. They don't call it high risk. High reward for nothing. Pays off. Every time Tyler Bate looks to rally, there it is again. McDonough set to the ropes, not by will, but by force. There's the strength of the Cruiserweight Champion. Pure muscle. Pound for pound, maybe the strongest man in this, in this entire tournament. Unfortunately for Tyler, desperation all over his face as J.D. McDonough continues to persevere. Signature strikes. Both these men are just emptying the tank right now. The action speaks for itself. How much of these two men got left in the tank? Tyler heading to the top. Could be going for that corkscrew. Right to the gullet of J.D. McDonough. Tyler Bates got this matchup in the bag. Here is your winner, and still the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Tyler Bates. Tyler Bates putting to rest a multiple month issue with J.D. McDonough, retaining his Cruiserweight Championship, all the while punching his ticket to the quarter final round. And the action gonna continue next week, right here in Hammerstein Ballroom, as the quarterfinals of the tournament kick off. NXT's young OG, Javon Evans, set for a high flying affair against Wesley. And also going down next week, one half of SmackDown's WWE Tag Team Champions, the LWO's Dragon Lee, meets the ever exciting, never slow down mantra of Nathan Frazier. Two of four quarterfinal matches going down right here, right next week in Manhattan, New York. But as for this Sunday afternoon, Technical difficulties may have delayed us a few hours, but these superstars showed up and showed out nonetheless. Tyler Bate, willing to defend his Cruiserweight Championship throughout the tournament, now awards Pete Dunn a shot in two weeks' time. Thank you for joining us here in Midtown Manhattan, New York. We'll see you next week for more Cruiserweight Classic.